Good day and welcome to Lab Talk. Uh, my name is Angela Carnwright and I'm going to be your host for today's session. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, Lab Talk is a weekly live presentation and Q&A session focused on providing our end user customers with expert tips on how to get the most from our products in their labs. The idea is that we can remind you of some of the best practices to enable to that will enable you to have meaningful results quicker uh, and optimize your lab processes for safety and productivity. So today's topic is on how to calibrate your microbiological incubator. And interestingly enough, this topic came about because of a customer who asked us to help them with a visual on how to set up and uh, calibrate their incubators after they purchased them from us. That uh, I'm gonna introduce our speaker today and that is Ms. Kendra Whitlatch. Uh, Kendra is a product applications manager here at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and she's going to help us with some great tips and do a demo live from the Immersive Labs. So with that, I'll welcome Kendra to join me here in um, on the camera. So over to you. Tell us how to help, help us calibrate our incubators. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, you know, this was definitely a topic that came up because a customer requested it. And so if we have anyone on who thinks of another topic that they'd love to see in a future episode, please put that in the chat because we're always looking for new ideas to make sure we can meet your needs. And so today we're going to talk about, um, you know, how to perform this calibration on these hair therm units. And just to give a, a brief introduction, you know, I want to talk about the hair therm family and what that means to Thermo Fisher. And so with these units, which the Heratherm family right now is comprised of microbiological incubators, refrigerated incubators, and heating and drying ovens. And this entire family has been designed with sample safety in mind, and it's intended for a very wide range of applications across pharmaceutical, food, research laboratories. Chances are you're using one of these units somewhere in your lab. In particular, microbiological incubators and the heating and drying ovens are really designed to provide long-term performance with optimal conditions. And they do that by using a range of convection types. And so we have a large range of sizes and convection types for you to choose from to fit your application needs. Convection types range from gravity convection, mechanical convection, to dual convection. And so what does that mean? And what's the best choice for your lab? And so if we think about gravity convection, gravity convection relies on really gentle air currents within the unit because hot air rises. And it's so gentle that it's great for really sensitive samples. It's gonna offer good uniformity and good recovery. And it's actually available across all of our incubators and ovens range. So then if we think about mechanical convection and what that means, that actually relies on a fan to move the air around inside the unit rather than relying on these gentle air currents. So mechanical convection units offer really excellent temperature uniformity and temperature recovery on a door opening. But if you deal with something sensitive like powders or really easily disturbed samples, maybe not the best choice for your lab. And again, this convection type is available in incubators and in ovens. And then a really special type of convection that we offer in just the incubators and the microbiological incubators line is dual convection. And that's actually exactly how it sounds. And so it's a unit that comes with a fan so you can leverage mechanical convection when needed, but you can also completely turn that fan off. So if you have an application need that deals with gravity convection or a sample that's really sensitive, you can utilize that functionality. So now that we've covered some Heratherm basics, let's jump into today's topic, which is the best practice for calibrating that Heratherm microbiological incubator. And the really great news is that once you learn how to calibrate your microbiological incubator, you can use the exact same process to also calibrate your Heratherm heating and drying ovens. And so when it comes to calibration of your unit, if you're wanting to ensure that your unit is calibrated to say a set temperature, so if we're doing a microbiological incubator, that might be something like 37 degrees Celsius. And the great thing about hair therm and the way it's designed is that it really couldn't be simpler. Because we offer a really easy to utilize one-step automatic calibration. And that's really tip number one. 
It's so simple to just go in and make sure that your unit is calibrated at the temperature that you're going to run. And so for this automatic calibration procedure, we're just going to utilize that LCD display, navigate to the calibration menu, select automatic, and hit enter. That's it. Now, and you know, it is a good practice, really, to make sure before you start this process that you've really equilibrated your incubator or oven to the temperature that you desire to calibrate at. And so when it comes to equilibration, I hate to give a really specific time because it's really dependent on your lab, on your temperature, where you started, where you're going. And so it could take not very long, it could take an hour to really get a good solid stable calibration temperature, or it could take several hours. And so my tip here is that if you're worried about it or if you have the time, because time is so important in your day in the lab, a really great practice is to set your incubator or oven up maybe overnight, right? Because then it's not wasting your time. Let it equilibrate overnight so in the morning when you come in, you know your unit's ready to calibrate. So, you know, just to reiterate, tip number one, just actually really utilize that automatic one-step calibration. Which brings us into the next idea of calibration. So if you have multiple units, and I hear this from customers all the time, they've got multiple units and they want to ensure that each individual unit is calibrated to the same reference. And so how can we do that? So it's really simple and it actually is very similar to how we do the manual calibration, except we're also going to integrate now an external reference sensor. So of course we absolutely recommend the Thermo Fisher Scientific Reference Sensor. And a great option to utilize is the SmartView Pro sensor that we're actually gonna look at during the uh, preview today. And so when it comes to this external reference sensor, really all you're going to do before you start your equilibration step for calibration is to just make sure that that sensor is placed in the center of the unit. And so if you're placing the, sen the sensor in the center of the unit, you're actually going to be calibrating to that air temperature. We offer access ports on all of our units, usually on the back, that will allow you to feed that sensor wire through, and then you can have the sensor body on the outside so you know exactly what temperature you're monitoring. Then we're gonna go through the same procedure. We're gonna to go to that LCD screen, and we're going to go to calibrate menu, but instead of automatic, we're going to pick manual. And then we are going to actually input the reference temperature and the unit will calibrate then to that setting. Again, always a good idea. If you're concerned about how long it's going to take to calibrate, utilize that overnight time so you're not wasting valuable lab time. And that brings us to tip number three. I said before, when we're doing manual calibration, you can absolutely calibrate to just the center air temperature of your incubator. But if you really want to have um, really good sample uniformity across multiple incubators, it's actually a really great idea to immerse that sensor into an isothermal container. And what do I mean by an isothermal container? It's really just a container of a substance that is going to protect that sensor from small air changes, right? Because we do have you know, convection within the unit while it's running. And so you might have a little bit of air movement while you're doing the calibration process. And what that isothermal container does is protects your sensor from those minute air changes in temperature. And so the recommendation that we make is if you're doing an application like this, immerse your measuring sensor in a small volume of glycerol. Glycerol is a really great isothermal container because it takes a while for the temperature to change and to equilibrate. And it also doesn't evaporate away before you're done with your process. So on that tip, definitely you don't want to use an isothermal container filled with something like water or alcohol that might evaporate away before your calibration process is completed. Again, we're going to make sure our sensor is in the middle of the unit. So we're going to add our isothermal container kind of on a middle shelf and submerge our sensor into that container. This is definitely a step that is going to increase the time to equilibrate because now we're also not just heating the air and getting a stable air temperature, 
but we're getting a stable sample temperature. So definitely, you know, plan your time accordingly. And again, to just reiterate, you know, overnight is actually a really great time or maybe over a long lunch, something like that, right? Give yourself time to make sure you get a really stable reading before going into this calibration procedure. And with that, you know, just to reiterate, I, calibration of these hair therm units is actually very simple. And so, you know, if you're just looking to calibrate an individual unit or just looking to make sure that your unit is calibrated at the temperature that you're going to run at the majority of the time, really utilize that so simple one-step automatic calibration process. If you're calibrating multiple units with an external sensor, we're still going to use a really simple process that we're actually going to walk through with the immersive lab next, but really allow for this manual calibration. And that will allow you to calibrate multiple units with, to that external sensor so you know all of your units are running at the same temperature. And when it comes to doing manual calibration, if you have the time and the necessary equipment, it's really a great idea to immerse that measuring sensor into an isothermal container, something like glycerol because then you're actually calibrating to your sample temperature and not just to the air temperature in the unit. So let's go now to the immersive lab and do some demonstrations on how to do all of these calibrations. So we're with the lab and what you can see here now is actually that we have two units set up on the bench top. One is a Heratherm incubator and one is a Heratherm oven. And these are actually 60 liter bench top units. The one on the left that is set to 37 degrees is, of course, our Heratherm microbiological incubator. And that's the one that we're going to demonstrate calibration techniques on. So first, let's talk about that automatic calibration. So for automatic calibration, all we're going to do, yeah, is just zoom in then on that LCD screen. And then we're going to um, kind of utilize over to the calibration menu. Thanks, Maggie. We're going to select auto calibration, set our desired temperature, which in this case we've calibrated, you know, we've equilibrated to 37 degrees. We're going to set that as our desired calibration temperature and hit enter. And there we go. We've done an automatic calibration of a hair therm unit. So now I'll draw your attention to the right of the screen. We have what is listed here as the new version of the SmartView Pro. And this is an external reference sensor that we have placed inside the unit. Now, for demonstration purposes, we're going to open up the unit and show you exactly how we have it placed and what's going on. But for your own use, we would definitely want to do all of this pre-work before you started the equilibration of the unit. Because as soon as we open that door, right, we've lost our equilibration. So you'll see here we have run the tubing for the external sensor through that access port in the back wall. And we've placed the sensor then on a shelf in the middle of the unit to ensure that we're getting full access to the air. And we would close up, maybe equilibrate for a couple hours overnight, depending on the temperature. And then we would run basically almost the exact same process as before. So we would zoom back in on the screen. And we would navigate back over to the calibration menu using our LCD display. And now instead of automatic calibration, we would go for a manual calibration and input again, you know, it's for the demo, we can't do this, but we would input that same temperature that say 37 that we've equilibrated to, or if you're using an oven, maybe it's 150 degrees or 200 degrees, whatever it happens to be. You would input that temperature, hit enter, and now your unit is calibrated to your reference sensor. So if we open up the unit again and talk about the same way, the exact same procedure if you're doing a manual calibration with an isothermal container, except now we also include our isothermal container on that center shelf. So here we have a flask that we filled 
with an isothermal unit, my glycerol. And when it comes to this isothermal container, the thing that's really key is you wanna make sure that your temperature probe, whatever it might be, is fully submerged in that liquid. And you wanna have sufficient volume to make sure that if you do calibrate overnight, you're not gonna to lose too much through evaporation, which is absolutely why we recommend a substance like glycerol that is not going to evaporate as easily or as quickly as water or alcohol. So we would do the same process again. We would shut up our incubator or our oven, let it set a couple hours overnight until we have a good stable reference temperature and perform the exact same manual calibration again. And that's it. That's really all there is to calibrating these Heratherm units. Like I said, this is actually a process that can be done with the, uh, the Heratherm incubator, which we've seen here. But it can also be done with the exact same unit, you know, that we saw to the right with that Heratherm heating and drying oven. And so it really allows flexibility. And once you've learned how to do it on one unit, right, we're just going to pop across and do it on any other unit in our lab. So these are both tabletop versions. You can also do this same exact procedure on the larger uh, floor standing models as well. And so now that we've talked about, you know how to do this calibration, you know, we just want to summarize and, and really bring back just how simple and easy it is to really get this optimal temperature uniformity and stability by using these calibration procedures. And so, you know, just to bring it back to what we were talking about, use that one step automatic calibration to set your unit. Or if you really need to set multiple units and you need that reference sensor for your protocol, just make sure you give yourself plenty of time to make sure your unit is equilibrated and then follow these really simple steps. And thank you to Maggie and the Immersive Lab for demoing just how easy it is to use these Heratherm units. So I do wanna provide a little bit of reference material. And also you know, on the website, we offer you know, brochures and application notes and also links to other YouTube videos that we have for these Heratherm line units.